The problem of Ukraine's corrupt judiciary continues to confound. On August 9th, detectives from the Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine nabbed Kyiv judge Mykola Chaus for demanding a bribe of 150,000 US dollars. However, on account of his judicial immunity, this corrupt judge cannot be prosecuted, arrested, or even monitored by the police, nor can he be prevented from fleeing the country. Chaus's immunity can only be lifted by decision of the Supreme Council of Ukraine, which is currently on a summer hiatus. The Specialized Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office plans to request an emergency session of the Supreme Council on this matter, but in the meantime, Chaus is free to go about his life unfettered. The Chaus affair highlights the systemic problems plaguing the implementation of the lustration law, Lustratia, which was enacted in 2014 as a result of the revolution of dignity in Ukraine and subsequent social pressure, and which aims to weed out corrupt judges and thereby to restore the faith of Ukrainian citizens in their judicial system. The lustration law requires for all judges to be investigated and that those who are corrupt and or violate their oath of office be terminated from their positions. An example of this law at work is the July 12th decision of the Supreme Court of Ukraine, which ruled that three judges, Alla Chalaya, Yulia Shvachach, and Vitaly Martinkevich, who had, under pressure from the Yanukovych regime, illegally ruled against Revolution of Dignity activists in favor of their detention, had violated their oath of office. However, frustratingly, the answer to the question, and now what, is not immediately apparent or forthcoming. Tetyana Kozachenko, director of the Lustration Department of the Ukrainian Ministry of Justice, recently stated that for the time being, the lustration law has no teeth. The majority of judges remain in their positions. For instance, of 70 judges who were caught for wrongdoing under the lustration law, only one was officially dismissed. The decision on a judge's dismissal can only be handed down by the Supreme Council of Ukraine, and following through on lustration law statutes is impeded by procedural complexities in stripping judges of their immunity. Many points in the process depend on judicial decisions, that is, the decisions of professional peers with a vested personal interest in maintaining the status quo. Thus, the implementation of lustration law statutes is generally met with tremendous resistance and thus causes the wheels of judicial reform to turn very slowly. Notwithstanding this fact, Tetyana Kozachenko stated that noticeable changes are indeed occurring, particularly after the Supreme Council's June 2016 ratification of constitutional changes regarding the judiciary, changes that are sure to underpin the genuine reform and modernization of the Ukrainian judicial system and each case of judicial corruption exposed and appropriately dealt with is an opportunity to galvanize and accelerate this process. Like the case of Judge Mykola Chaus, or the August 15th dismissal of corrupt higher economic court judge Viktor Schwetz, who was caught accepting a bribe in July 2016. Schwetz had already amassed several hundred thousand dollars in cash and property, and had recently secured a Hungarian passport. Although during the first weeks of August 2016, as compared with July, fighting in the Donbass region was slightly less intense, with fewer casualties, the situation on the front remains very dire. Every day, Russian and pro-Kremlin forces use heavy artillery, which has been banned under the Minsk Agreement, to shell Ukrainian army in volunteer positions. According to the testimonies of Ukrainian soldiers, a modicum of relief from the constant combat stress and exhaustion has come from important but unusual allies of the four-legged variety. Animal friends are present at almost every Ukrainian checkpoint and army camp in the Donbass region, particularly cats. The soldiers take great care of them. In their own words, the cats provide psychotherapeutic relief and moments of joy in difficult circumstances. They also serve as mouse and rat catchers, helping to keep encampments free of destructive vermin, which are plentiful. Cats are also important as an early warning system, because they sense and react to distant gunfire and enemies approaching much earlier than people. Dogs serve the latter purpose as well. However, they generally bark to warn the soldiers of impending danger, which is helpful at night, when soldiers are asleep, but can be a liability during the day. This is why quiet cats are such great allies for the soldiers. All the more when they can also keep a soldier company and warm at his post on a cold night by cuddling up to his chest under his jacket. In the words of one soldier, we give them food and they heal our souls. With Russia recently heating up its rhetoric regarding the Crimea, 
even threatening to abandon the Minsk peace talks. And with the anniversary of Ukrainian independence just around the corner, there's potential for great disruption for and in Ukraine in the coming weeks. Ukrainians everywhere should take note. I'm Tanya Stech, and this was Ukraine in the News. Хочемо запросити українців Канади на Блюр фестиваль, який відбудеться 17 вересня. Ми антитіла, дамо там великий сет із України. Найкращий, щирий привіт!